significant advances have been made in exports between Northern Ireland and the Republic and vice versa. So even though the wider public have not really cottoned on to the nuances of the Windsor Agreement, the business sector seems to be beginning to change its, uh, its, 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 its alignments away from Britain towards the European Union and therefore into the, into the, into the Republic. Hello, I'm Brendan Donnelly. I'm the director of the Federal Trust. Over the past few years, the Federal Trust has often discussed the situation in Northern Ireland. And we've done that because um, Northern Ireland brings out in in a particularly stark way uh, many of the problems and uh, indeed incoherences of of Brexit. We've been lucky enough to have as a partner in these discussions often um, Jeff Martin, the former Commission, European Commission representative in Belfast, and then the European Commission representative in London. Jeff, thank you very much for joining us. We're going to talk about the present situation in, in Northern Ireland. Uh, w- what do you think the, the public and political mood is in Northern Ireland at the moment? The public mood is one of despair about the general economic situation. But it's also one where external matters, and indeed, uh, as far as we are concerned, Brexit is seldom being discussed. It's extraordinary. Uh, As for the political level people, all the political parties except the DUP are biding their time until the Secretary of State makes his final proposals to the DUP, DUP, hoping in doing so that they will return to the Executive Committee, which means that if they don't, there'll be no continuing government in Northern Ireland. So the situation in general terms is abysmal. What are the expectations or hopes, um, either from the DUP or from others, uh, for this uh, set of proposals that may be forthcoming from the British government? Well, I think everyone would welcome the, all the parties coming into the Executive Committee and therefore devol- de- devolved, re- devolved devolution returning to Northern Ireland. But the DUP have held out time and time again using all kinds of arguments related to Brexit as their excuse for not joining the others. What possibilities does they foresee or you foresee uh, for breaking the logjam? What could the, the Secretary of State say that, that um, might um, get things moving again? Well, he might, he might say, he might tinker with the Windsor agreements in terms of very minute detail. He certainly can't bring anything from, anything from Brussels because the European Commission has said the matter is closed. Uh, on the other hand, he may uh, assuage the fears in the DUP ranks by promising all kinds of things relating to a continuing uh, Northern Northern Ireland in the United Kingdom. And if you had listened to the speech by the leader of the DUP last weekend, you would have heard that him referring to the United Kingdom more and more and more times than would be normally the case. So there is nervousness and anticipation at the same time. You you suggest that that a a mixture of of tinkering and... um... Um, perhaps extra finance for Northern Ireland might be enough to bring the DUP back o- on board. Um, what would be the consequences for that? How would that work out exactly? That would mean that for the first time in the history of Northern Ireland's devolution, Sinn Féin would be the First Minister and the DUP would be subsidiary to that. It would also mean that the DUP, as the devolved, respons- the, the devolved government people, would have to take responsibility for dealing with a deficit of 660 million pounds this year, bearing in mind the fact that every year, for some considerable time, the British Exchequer has sent to Northern Ireland 14 billion pounds in terms of subsidies. So from a Northern Irish point of view, if the Secretary of State was to help resolve the the problem of, uh, of the deficit, that would be encouraging for the DUP. On the other hand, if the Secretary of State does not say that much can be done, then the devolved government would be left children the responsibility about how they can handle themselves the responsibilities which are thrust on them. And that, in, a cir- in circumstances where cuts already being made, would be very difficult to swallow for all the political parties. So difficulties would, would ensue. But there are people who say that uh, the DUP's hesitation, more than hesitation, blockage of, of progress, uh, has been precisely because they don't want to find themselves in the position of being number two to, to Sinn Féin. And the Brexit, while it's important, well, was more a pretext. Uh, do you share that view? And, and if so, then how is that going to be resolved? I partly share that view. 
so if the DUP do not move and therefore government will remain uh, in abeyance, then the situation will be one in which either there will be direct rule, which I can't see from Westminster, or the Secretary of State would have the option of calling another election. If he did that, I can't really see how that would greatly alter the situation, except perhaps more members from the official Unionist Party would join the executive than is the case at the present time. So it's it's very difficult to see how constructively things can move ahead at all. Uh, which way do you think the Secretary of State would, would jump? Would it be di- direct rule? Uh, why, no. why do you rule that out so categorically? Because direct rule would offend uh, large sections of Northern Ireland society, and in particular would offend the sentiments behind the Good Friday Agreement, whereby the government of Ireland, the Republic of Ireland, was part and parcel of the discussions with the United Kingdom about Northern Ireland, about how Northern Ireland will move forward. Also, I can't see direct rule being acceptable here in the United Kingdom to many of the other parties, perhaps perhaps, perhaps the Conservative Party or elements in it, but certainly I can't see the other parties accepting that, accepting, that, accepting that now. And of course, from a Sinn Féin point of view, it would be totally and completely unacceptable. What's the sort of timetable that you foresee if there were to be uh, further elections? When when would they take place? Later in, later in the year, perhaps, because one of the elements behind the thinking, to the extent that it is thinking in Northern Ireland, is, of course, the election in this country next year and the election in the Republic. And uh, from that point of view, people are wondering what those two elections will bring forth. Will there be a Labour government in Britain? Will there be a Sinn Féin presence in the government of Ireland? And these shadows over people's shoulders are creating a certain amount of consternation. Let's talk about the two of those uh, expectations. Uh, uh, What what would be the the general reaction or would it be a varied reaction within Northern Ireland to uh, the prospect of a Labour government? Interestingly, I feel that it, the, well, a Labour government would be accepted in a way which perhaps had not been the case in the past. At the, on the other hand, I'm told that the recent visit by Hillary Benton to Northern Ireland was extremely constructive, even though people didn't think that a Labour government in London would bring forth any major change in the circumstances of Northern Ireland. Uh, what, what was the... the, the, the um positive aspect uh, of the discussions that Hillary Benn had then. He he is a man of breadth of vision. He is a man who understands the wider world, in, including uh, the United Kingdom and Ireland. And he has left a sense of trust in him, which is a bit unusual coming from a trail of, of, of secretaries of state from Northern Ireland who have not been particularly uh, evident in terms of the confidence that, that they are giving to the other people. Sounds as if there's an expectation in in Northern Ireland that Sinn Féin may participate in next government in the Republic. Is that correct? Do 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 in the sense that uh, you think that's a, a proper prediction that is going to be fulfilled? Well, the the opinion polls in the Republic indicate. Sinn Féin opinion very strong in in the mid-30s. If that is the case, the question is, uh, will Sinn Féin be able to form a government by itself? I don't think so. On the other hand, I do think that if Sinn Féin polled well, maybe even polling a majority of seats, and the government was formed by a coalition of Fine Fine Gael and Fine Fáil, that would be unsatisfactory from the point of view of the public as a whole. And therefore, people are entertaining the idea that some form of coalition government involving either Fianna Fáil, likely, or Sinn Féin, or um, Fianna Gael with Sinn Féin, with Sinn Féin would be likely. It would, it would, it certainly would be a very different situation. It would certainly put the finger of, of accusation on Sinn Féin as to how they wanted to react in terms of constructive policies and programmes. Um, what's the expectation um, in Northern Ireland of, of the, the medium-term consequences of, of Sinn Féin being in government? Presumably if they were in government, either obviously uh, alone or as senior partners in a coalition, um, they would be able to, to inject a lot of their ideas, uh, traditional ideas about Irish unification, into the, the stance of the Republic. Well, they would, but... but uh... Then again, even though people both in the Republic and Northern Ireland feel that unity may be in the in the future a possibility, uh, at the same time, 
they don't see how that's going to come about. And the idea of, of a of a of a referendum, for example, in the north, is is put is being put back on the back burner again. Uh, in addition, well, where in the north that, or the south or both? Where is it being put in, on? In the in the north, and in, in the, the south north. as well. Unclear. Unclear. Uh, of course, the, 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 the referendum would only be called by the Secretary of State of Northern Ireland to trigger the mechanism to begin with. And uh, in doing so, what if it was to be carried, which I doubt, it would only mean the beginnings of a discussions about what shape of a United Ireland there might be. And of course, there's been no discussion of a serious nature about that possibility at all. There are many possible, there are many possible scenarios about, about a United Ireland, but none of them have been really put on the table yet. Mm -hmm. Uh, are, are there such discussions even in embryo taking place? Um, there are there are some about uh, uh, if a referendum was to be passed, uh, would it be passed knowing that there would be United Ireland would follow as it were, or knowing only that discussions would take place about what kind of United Ireland? So it's a rather mixed bag of opinion. What importance, if any, do you attach to Steve Baker's remarks about uh, uh, the idea, possibly, uh, of a supermajority in such a referendum? I find that extremely interesting, I must say, especially as he made it in the South at a meeting of North-South ministers. I haven't heard that before. Um, I haven't thought through the consequences of it and whether or not legislation would be passed here, for example, to allow it to happen when, as we all know, the situation with Brexit was a quite different situation when 50 plus one was discussed. There's been some speculation that, that Baker has put forward this idea uh, in the hope that it might be transferred to any second European referendum, that there would need to be a super majority for rejoining. Um, well, let's see about that. I, I can't see that. But I do I do think that, that Baker's point underpinned the fact that I, that I assume that he believes, as I do, that a slim majority of 50 plus one or so percent for unity would not work. Most certainly it would not work. It would be regarded as entirely unsatisfactory as Seamus Mallon, the former deputy leader of the SL, SDLP at one point pointed out. 50 plus one for a referendum pro Irish unity would, would cause major, major problems. If we have another um, similar discussion in six months time, what do you think will have happened by then? What are your predictions? Uh, my predictions are that the DUP will enter the executive rather than face the alternative possibility, which would cause more problems for it. For it. If, it if it if it reaches the executive, uh, I presume that the leader of the DUP will not join the executive as the, as the number two. He will appoint one of his members to do so. Uh, I therefore believe that devolution will stagger forward slightly in Northern Ireland. Uh, with all the problems that that entails with the deficit, and that there will that will will be a continuing series of mishaps and mistakes in the Northern Ireland position, which would have the effect, uh, I must say, of bringing the Republic of Ireland closer into discussions about Northern Ireland than had been the case for many years. Don't let's forget that the Good Friday Friday Agreement provided for a number of consultations to take place on a regular basis. One of which was between the East and the West, between the Irish Republic government and the government in Westminster. This has not been satisfactory. And to some extent, people in Ireland feel that the Irish Republic has been excluded. Though the circumstances which I therefore envisage were when the DUP was entering an executive committee surrounded by these difficulties would be helped, would be helped by the government of Ireland coming in and giving support were it were necessary to the British government in that in that in that scenario. Final question: um, Has um, the Windsor framework made a, an appreciable difference um, to the political climate in in Northern Ireland? Negative, positive? No, people don't understand what the Windsor fr framework is. On the other hand, uh, the situation in Northern Ireland is changing in, in the sense that significant advances have been made in exports between Northern Ireland and the Republic, and vice versa. So even though the wider public have not really cottoned on to the nuances of the Windsor Agreement, the business sector seems to be beginning to change its, uh, its, 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 its alignments 
away from Britain towards the European Union and therefore into the, into the, into the Republic. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, it was an un unfair question to put to you about a prediction for the future. Predictions about the future, as Churchill said, are always to be avoided. But indeed. thank you very much indeed, Jeff, and uh, we'll return to this issue in the not-too-distant future, I'm sure. Thank you very much thank indeed. Thank you very much to our, our viewers. Uh, there are many other similar vi videos uh, on the Federal Trust website, which I hope you'll find of interest. Goodbye. Goodbye.